Well, today's episode, as you know, we're back after some really uh, personal circumstances that resulted for me not to do the next episode, or should I say this one, now I finally can officially do it. So today we're going to do the entirety of what happened on September 17th, where we had three Japanese shows. The first one is from Choco Pro. This one's a very special occasion with number 330. 330, which is the first year anniversary of Mia Tsuba since she joined Got to Move and started training and debuted as you go from the very beginning. And of course, we continue with more with New Japan Pro Wrestling with Road to Destruction as we get to Kobe real soon. This is going to be really epic. And of course, once again, Evil and Show continues to claim they are the champions, even though they're not. And of course, we have. Of course, uh, Pro Wrestling No, which I want to save this one for last, which we celebrate 25 years of Naomichi Marifuji, who's been considered as the arc genius. Uh, if you guys know his reputation, it goes back all the way from all Japan to the time when M M Masahiro Misawa started Noah. And then, of course, we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are throwing, who's booked, and what matches are set. And of course, we have any injured wrestlers, or we have the who got signed or who is departing. The whole enchilada. So, let's get ready for another episode of the Leaded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we review a lot of pro wrestling events from various promotions from anywhere in the world. Not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, wherever pro wrestling exists, even if there's a country that even pro wrestling is growing little by little. We also do some news updates, discussion videos, we even have, of course, the Unagi Sayaka watch, if you're a fan of her. But, however, in this particular episode, if you like this episode, please, of course, uh, uh, subscribe to us, and of course, click that like button on us, and we'll be getting a lot of re daily reviews. So... Let's begin with our very first uh, review, and this is from Choco Pro. Now, as you know, Choco Pro is the flag show with uh, Got to Move, which is run by Emi Sakura. Uh, this is the first year anniversary of Mia Yatsuba. Now, those who are familiar with her or those who are not, let me explain who she is. Mia Yatsuba began wrestling about almost a year ago. Um, she is the first ever non Emi Sakura trainee. She was never under the guise uh, training of Emi Sakura. The person who took charge of that was none other than the Big Apple, Mei Suruga. So Emi has never trained her, but however, she did test her out in one of the much one of the past Got to Move shows. Uh, some point, maybe this year or last year, what, wherever uh, I just can't remember when. However, Mei Yatsuba has shown a lot of promising, and not to mention to the much surprising, her sister even debuted. Uh, this year in um in tr in a in a got to move show, but uh, now this is Mia Yasuba's very first show, uh, Choco Pro, where we celebrate her first year anniversary. So let's go from start to finish. Our first match, uh, we have a three way match. We have Chiko Shikawa, uh, Taro Yamada, and Masahiro Takanashi. Now I don't know who this Taro Yamada is, but however. Um, apparently, uh, before he was doing his little speech, um, Masa attacked him for saying, you know, all this, that about him. So he kind of asked Shiko Shikawa to double team against him. So it became a, um, 
a two-on-one on occasion because he's an outsider. Now, if you guys are familiarized with that terminology, basically, he's not originally from the Gatamu Choco Pro brand. So, that's always been the case. Now, for some odd reason, the fans were cheering behind the guy. It was very surprising. But he was able to pick up a good win by pinning Chico Shikawa, which was very upsetting. But, nonetheless, it was a pretty good win. Next up, we have a very interesting tag team match. We have Sayaka Obihiro uh, teaming up with Balenaki. They take on the current Asian Dream Tag Team Champions in a non-title match. Um, Shin Dragon, consistent of Shin Suzuki and Shon Shiru. Now, you probably would have guessed if they would have won this match, if Balenaki and Obi were able to beat Shin Suzuki, I mean Shin Dragon, they would have opportunity, of course. However, Shin Suzuki still has some unresolved issues towards uh, Balenaki, if you guys know this. When Balenaki was still the Super Asia champion, Shin Suzuki challenged him, but however, um, he was unsuccessful. You would have thought this was going to be a grudge match in some capacity. Well, it kind of did, because in this press perspective, it was, of course, um, a diving one foot stop onto Obi thanks to Chonchiro to pick up the win. However, in post match, Shin Suzuki was carrying the tag title right in his face. Um, I don't know if he's daring him to challenge him or whatever, but it's kind of um, how do I put this in, a, in, in terms like he's daring him? You know, I don't know. I, I know that he's not, I don't know if he's still interested in the tag titles. I mean, he already, uh, Balenaki already became a champion for two titles in the in the promotion. I mean, the not only the, the tag titles, but also the Super Asia title. But uh, we'll see how that progresses. Now, our main event, of course, is the one we've been expecting. Uh, we have um, Sayaka teaming up with um, Mei Shruga, taking on Miya Yatsuba and Mochi Natsumi. Now, in this perspective, Mia hasn't picked up a win that she was able to do on her own in a tag match. Now, if you guys try to compare this to the Waka Tsukiyama, where she was in a tag match with Tam Nakano, taking on Nanana Takahashi and Kairi, this is nothing compared to it. This is different. Uh, the story with Waka was very unique. But, but Mia, she's still on a learning curve. However, of course, there's that whole tension between student and teacher from very beginning that's always been the case because you know may shruga was the one who trained um of course mia yasuba from the very beginning you probably would have thought oh crap this is going to be good well it kind of would have been like that but however mia yasuba who's refuses to give up i have to say she picked up a good partner mochi natsumi who is also one of emi sakura's students uh, but, however, there was like a, a, a somewhat version that Mia was trying to do with the orange punch onto, um, onto Sayaka. And she was able to pick up her first one. This is her first one after one year since she debuted. And this is going to be emotional for her because it takes time for someone to pick up their first win. And this is one. She has won matches, but she wasn't the one who initiated the win. But that's how in this type of go. Now, for our... Junkin tournament. Um, this was a very strange one. This was a very unique one for me. Um, somehow, me Yasuba actually went all the way to the finals. Uh, you probably would have thought no, there was no way she's going to make it to the finals. However, she did. But her opponent in the finals was none other than Chiko Shikawa, another mentor of hers in the promotion. And of course, um, Mia went Brock. She went a paper and it was over just like that. But nonetheless, they did celebrate her anniversary and, you know, it was a lot of fun. So we'll see what happens next time. But right now, let's move on with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. We continue with more to Road to Destruction by New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think we're in day seven. Now, I want to make this officially on the record. There are some shows from this tour that are not even televised or even you can watch on live on demand. But however, with this one, you can be able to see it. 
Uh, it opened up with singles action, Yuto Nakajima taking on Hiromu Takahashi. You probably would have said this would, uh, Hiromu would have put this one in the bag. Of course he did. Uh, of course the Young Lions are supposed to lose. And it was fitting with, of course, that, um, Yu Nakajima getting the Boston Crab by Hiromu Takahashi, which was very fitting. But of course, uh, we know that Yuto Nakajima will grow strong and we'll see what happens in his future from here on out. Next up, we have more of the Young Lions. This time, we have Bolton Oleg and um, Oscar Lube taking on the, the uh, GBH, Tomaki Hamna and Togi Makabe. Now, just like the earlier match, you probably would have thought it would have been a piece of cake. It did, of course, ground hitting. But, of course, you see the spirit and the toughness of the Young Lions who are not going to be intimidated by the veteran wrestlers. However, in this case, it was, uh, who was it? Oscar? Yep, Oscar Lobe with the King Kong leg drop, uh, leg drop that finished him off. And, of course, GBH win thanks to Togi Makabe. Now, next up, we have six-man tag team action. We have, of course, Rusuke Taguchi, Tiger Mask, and Satoshi Kojima taking on Yo, Toru Yano, and Hiroshi, uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Now, you probably would have thought in your righteous minds how this is going to go. Well, it kind of went well. I mean, here's the thing. We know that both Yano and Yo are Chaos members, but Yano and Tanahashi are a good uh, tag team known as Bebop Tag Team. Uh... That pl played pretty well. However, like any other match when it comes to Yano, I wish Kevin Kelly would say, there, oh, my monitor. That means that uh, there was a low blow conducted and Yano did that um, with both Tiger Mask and Taguchi. But however, he only was able to pin Taguchi, uh, pin Tiger Mask. One, two, three, was done. And of course, as always, <laughs> so basically, I don't know what happened. Even Tanahashi did it, so did um, Yo. So I thought it was really great. I, I just love it. You know, it's just makes it fun. Now, our next match we have, of course, is TMDK. All four members, with the exception of uh, Ichiban Sweet Boy, who's on excursion. Uh, and, of course, Robbie Eagles doing his own thing at the moment. Uh, we have Bad Dude Tito, Shane Haste. Mikey Nichols, and of course, the frontman, the current IWGP World Television Champion, Zack Sabre Jr. They take on the members of Chaos. First, first of course, two-thirds of the never open weight six-man tag team champions. We're talking about Tomoyuro Ishii and Kaguchika Okada. And then, of course, Bushimon, uh, the current IWGP uh, heavyweight tag team champions, Yoshihashi, and of course, Hiroki Goto. You probably would have thought in your minds this was going to be a very interesting match not to mention for Nichols and Hayes to send a direct message to their cha uh, to the champions who carry the titles because we know they have gone for them t these titles already but however how will this play out well it played out pretty well until of course uh, Nichols pan Yoshihashi and that's pretty much how it goes so we'll see how uh, this progress until we get to the 24th of this month uh, I'm looking forward to it Oh, or is it the ninth? Whatever. But we'll see until the next paper, big pay-per-view. Next up, we have the United Empire consisting of Callum, New Callum Newman, Hinare, Great Okan, and Jeff Cobb taking on LIJ. Taking on uh, with Bushi, Shingo Tagagi, Yoda Suji, and uh, Tetsuya Naito. Now keep in mind, Jeff Cobb is gunning for Naito for the contract for a shot of the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship at Wrestle Kingdom. But however, we know that Will Ospreay, as you know, currently who is not present, he's somewhere else, of course, uh, preparing for his match against Naomichi Marifuji, which of course was fitting. However, this will be a direct message to him, all thanks to Yurotsuji. Now, you probably would have thought that since, of course, we've seen majority of the times when LIJ and United Empire has butted heads, United Empire gets the advantage. Well, not this time because it was the Gene Blaster by Gene, by uh, Yoda Suji to put away Newman, and one, two, three, it was over. However, during a post-match comment by Suji, he made perfectly things clear. Now... Will Ospreay, as you know, he has been throwing a fit towards Naito, saying that th this whole thing was his fault about you about ha 
having both championships and have them united. You know, um, Suji made it clear. Look, we he was he was the one who carried the belts. He never asked for unification. That was Ibushi. Now those were stating the facts, but they're saying that if he would have just defended those belts separately, none of this would have happened. So basically, that's how it is. So, but there has been talks about bringing back the Intercontinental Championship. Well, anything could happen. Suji Filth, that's a belt that he definitely wants to have. So we'll see what happens until then. Now, the best of series matches. This is match number two. As you know, the war between both Ren Narita and Shota Umino continues on. Now, these two guys known each other since their time at the New Japan Dojo. Uh, Suji, I mean, Umino ended up going to Rep Pro, studying under them. And then after that, we saw, um, what's his name? Uh, Ren Narita go to the LA Dojo. So that's the whole thing. But since coming back, there was no love loss between both of them. So they became like a bit of a rivalry along with Suji. But however, their rivalry is more deeper. However, in the first uh, in the first match, it was a draw. But this time, who's going to walk out? Well, that's a very interesting question. There was a lot of things that happened. But in the end, it was Desperado with the Pinchi Loco onto Master Wato. One, two, three. It's done just like that. Now, our main event, as you know, the House of Torture. Evil and that pipsqueak show continues to tell that they are the champions. That Tai Chi and Sonata forfeited those belts. Uh, no, they said that to themselves. They came out with their mouths open. We did not see Tai Chi or Sonata actually said that themselves so you probably say what the f is these uh dor dorks talking about now sonata as you know uh has spent seven years hoping that he can reach the top and he did but it's of course um what's his name evil who will not tolerate he felt that this is his rifle trophy and he will do whatever it takes to go to wrestle kingdom however uh he declares sonata as his puppet but Sonata is not like a puppet or the ball. But however, you know there was going to be some cutting corners, having oh, the ref knocked down, the whole thing. But however, it was uh, the moon saw by Sonata onto Dick Togo. One, two, three. But this war between both Tai Chi and Sonata taking on Show and Evil is far from over. So both titles are on the line. So we'll see what happens until then. But right now, let's move on with our last and final review Pro Wrestling Noah. Okay, Pro Wrestling Noah, this is the 25th anniversary of Naomichi Marifuji. Now, those who aren't familiarized with him, uh, let me give you guys a quick um, read around who he is. If you guys aren't are familiarized with them, good for you. Then you guys are on the bus with me. Uh, Naomichi Marifuji has been uh, pro wrestling for almost 25 years. Uh, he started out in all Japan as part of the Junior Heavyweight Division. During the time when John Baba was still alive, however, there was a lack of credibility that uh, led to the junior heavyweight division not having the credibility that it deserves. However, after 1990, when the passing of John Baba made headlines, that's when things changed. When Mats uh, Matsuhiro Misawa made the choice to leave uh, All Japan and form his own promotion called Pro Wrestling Noah. Now, Naomichi Marufuji was one of the early versions of the junior heavyweight division. Um, and then, of course, at some point, he moved up to heavyweight division. But, however, uh, he is one of few wrestlers that actually won three titles from all three promotions. Uh, junior heavyweight, in not only in NOAA, but also in New Japan and All Japan. So, But now he faces his opponent, is Will Ospreay. But we'll get to that in the end. Now, our first match we have in a six-man tag match, we have Alejandro. Hajime Ohara and Ninja Mac taking on Seiki Yoshioka, Dragon Bane, and Alpha Wolf. Now, there's no story on this one, but however, these guys are building up momentum as we go. We know that Seki Yoshioka is determined to win the GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship that Hayata has. So he's building up momentum. So is Alpha Wolf and 
Wolfbane, who are I mean Alpha Wolf and Wolf and ba Dragon Bane, who are the, now the challengers for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. So that sets the whole thing down right there. But however, in the end, of course, it was a jackknife by Alejandro onto Wolf. I'm not sure if it was a jackknife, but it did gave him a win. But however, Ninja Mac and Alejandro seems like they are now determined to win the GHC Junior Heavyweight uh, Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles. But what does this mean now? So only the Tag Team Champions can tell us this if something changes. But we'll see about that. Next up, we have um, the Younglings versus the Veterans. Uh, we have Yu Awada, Taishi Ozawa, and Kai Fujimura taking on uh, Funky Express's members um, Atsuki Saito, uh, Mohamed Yone, and they team up with now Lone Wolf, um, Takashi um, Sigura. This was a very interesting match. Now keep in mind, the veterans versus the the new guys, that's always been a good factor because it would help uh, the new guys to build a character. But however, in the end, it was a headlock by... Um, Sugira onto who was it Owada? On Owada, the on, on Osawa that picked up the win. I thought it was very interesting, so not bad. Next up, we have singles action. We have Rohi Owil, who is currently on an excur an excursion, uh, on loan by New Japan, taking on Junta Miyawaki. However, you probably can guess, guys like Miyawaki will not tolerate guys like um. Oiwa, who in fact is not even part of the pro wrestling Noah homegrown system. So basically, that's always been the case. But however, uh, he was given a warm welcome by the fans being there and all that sort of thing. So that sets the whole thing up for everyone. You know, I think it's really fun. But in the end, it was Oiwa with a beautiful German suplex to put away uh, Miyawaki. And that's how it rolls up. Now, next up, we have... A very interesting match. We have Kasuyuki Fuji, uh, Fujita, Daiki Inaba, uh, Masa Ki, uh, Kiromiya, and of course Manabu Soya taking on the members of Real, consistent of Shohei Taniguchi, Hideki Suzuki, and of course the current tag champions Saxon Huxley and Timothy Thatcher. So this is a very interesting match to watch. I mean, no storytelling that fits in. But, however, it does show a little bit of strength from each of these guys. But, <sighs> but in the end, of course, it was um, a jumping DDT by Manabu Soya to Taniguchi to pick up the win. So it is a pretty good win, even though Manabu is de determined to redefine himself, build himself back until, since the 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 disbandment of Congo. But we'll see how that goes. Next up, we have Yoshi uh, Nam Yoshi Namari N uh, Nari and uh, Oga uh, Sharon Ogawa, and of course um, Stalin Rogers and Daga taking on Eita Hayata and K to Kimia. Uh, as you know, there's still some history between Eita and, and Hayata against Ogawa. So that kind of sets it up as well, too. But however, of course, um, the the issue is also towards Kirimi, who is the supernova. But in the end of this match, it was, of course, um, a figure four uh, leg lock that was made by Kirimi that was trained to him by Keiji Muto that put away... The, um, was it uh rogers no no yeah rogers just like that it, it was pretty good <sighs> next up we have psycho clown and keno this is a very unusual team up they take on dr hijo to dr wagner jr and um lance Inouye. now the history between wagner and psycho clown goes deeper in that if you guys remember what i said it was psycho cloud who defeated uh equal to dr wagner's dad dr wagner jr for his match this is something that hadn't forgotten but however um the equal to dr wagner crossed the line by removing psycho clown's mask and resulting in disqualifying naming him the winner or naming psycho clown and keto the winner 
So basically, um, Wagner is complete. Now got his head into Psycho Cloud, who ha has tormented his family for far too long. So I think that's going to tell us a different story on that too. Next up, uh, we have a very interesting 10-man tag team match. Team number one, we have Hiroki, Asushi Koroge, Adam Brooks, and Axis, Katsuhiko Nakajima, and Sho Shiozaki taking on all members of uh, GLG, Yohei Tadasuke, uh, Anthony Green, Jack Morris, and Jake Lee. You probably would have thought in this perspective match that it would have been a lot more interesting. However, what was interesting is Keiji Muto was there as well, uh, who was doing an autograph session after the show. I thought it was great to see him, but however, we have seen how cohesive G, uh, GLG has become in recent months. Uh, but it was, of course, um, a submission by Jake Lee to... Um, to Hiroki to pick up the win, sending a direct message to Go Shiozaki, who is his opponent for the GAG Heavyweight Championship. But we'll see what happens until then. Now our main event is the one we've been waiting for. We have Will Ospreay versus Naomichi Marifuji. Now Will Ospreay said that Pro Wrestling Noah was one of the first Japanese wrestling shows he's got in and it allowed him to become a fan. However, his biggest hero is none other than, of course, um... Now, Michi Marafuji. Now, I did learn about him almost five years ago, but it was great to learn more about him. Um, but the match itself was great. It was a classic. No beef. It was like you can consider it as a dream match as you want. And it, it was very great. But, however, uh, Will Ospreay did apply a hidden blade and a Stormbreaker, allowing himself to pick up a good win against um, Marafuji. So, what a great moment. So we'll see what happens till then. But um, you would ask me, will he ever come back to Noah? I don't know. That, that's up to Noah's court. I mean, that's pretty much what they do. But until then, we'll just wait. Uh, right now, let's move on to our last and final thing, news updates. Okay, welcome to our news update. So this is what we have. Uh, first things first, uh, we want to give a congratulations to former WWE star Kelly Kelly and her husband on the birth of their twin children. Uh, it turns out to be a, bo a boy and a girl. Uh, they're both healthy. They're great. Uh, I'm very happy for them. Uh, so let's see how much of a handful they can be for twins, you know. <laughs> So I'm sure they'll get tips from, uh, what's her name, from um, Christy Hems, who has five children in total, but four of them are, in fact, quadruples. <laughs> so yes, so let's move on. Uh, the Five Wrestling has announced for their 13th of, Og of October, Primo Lucha, Hijo de Vikingo, will be in action taking on Swerve Strickland. So that's going to be a major match. Uh, Black Label Pro has announced for their up turn upcoming tournament, uh, Turbo Grabs 24, on later on this month, on the 23rd. Uh, one of the matches involved in the tournament, the B uh, the BL uh, BLP Championship, will be on the line. Uh, the current champion, Cole Raderick, will defend it against the debut of Sunny Kiss. So now Sunny Kiss is now making headways as well. Uh... As you all know, Jade Cargill is no longer with AW. But however, uh, it was reported by Wrestling Observers that now that they, uh, WWE has now scrambled to have their creative situation taken care of before uh, Jade arrives. So that is something I, we've been hearing. So there's been numerous uh, reports saying that they might have her go to the main roster. Now, it's still unclear yet until we find out that's 100% confirmed, but we'll see where that goes. Now, uh, uh, what's her name? Oh, yeah. For the GCW event, Blood on the Hills 2, that takes place on the 14th, oh, no, on the 8th of October. Um, 
Paul London makes his debut. So that's going to be awesome. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, as you know, the WWE tryouts has been announced. And there's been a few names that have been made. Uh, we have uh, David Goldie. Uh, I don't know much about him. Um, Jay Malachi, I've seen him in Deadlock Pro Wrestling. Uh, Richard Hawley, uh as you know, he just made his return back to wrestling after the uh, battling with cancer. Um, Brogan Finley, the son of David F Finley, and of course the current Never Open Champion um, of David Finley, and then of course we have Jamie Stanley, who we have seen in NWA as a manager for Joe Alonso, Ray Jazz um, as part of the. FBI, the Full Blood and Italians. Um, Damascus Largo, I don't know much about him. Or Hollywood uh, Haley J. Kelsey Heather, I don't know much. But there's some names I do recognize. We'll see how that goes for them. And then finally, Spark Yoshi Perusa has announced for two things. Coming for the Rising Heat West, that it's on the 11th of 10th. Uh, they announced that Viva Van will be there. And so will be the Pink Dream, Alex Gracia. But as for the East show on the 14th of October, Ultraviolet will be there as well. Uh, I think that's pretty much it right now for our news updates. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Um, first things first, I apologize for not doing an episode for Sunday. I had to um, take care of the cat. If you guys are asking me where he is, he's right now asleep right next to me. Uh, being a little cute little bit kitten. So anyway, he's only four months old. Uh, for our next episode, as you know, it's going to be Tuesday Wrestling. So we're going to have NWA, as always. Um, NXT. So those will be two things. Now, I uh, have did learn that they have set up the next uh, Stardom World. So I will be doing that. Uh, this is continuing on with more of the five-star Grand Prix. So we'll see where we go from there. Uh, but for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.